welcome to Jimmerism Total Notary channel. Today we will make a little review of the um, Corsair gaming mouse Shimitar RGB Pro maybe. In any case um, there is only one Shimitar anyway so we'll be looking at this and this is a little anecdotal review I've been using the Shimitar uh, mouse for how long is it? three four months yeah uh, so I have gotten a little hang of around you know um, how it's for three months I believe anyways no matter I've been using using it for a couple of months and I now have a hang of what type of mouse it is and uh, you know the software too in any case let's look into it right so this is an anecdotal review. I don't have a similar mouse or a uh, the same mouse basically but from another um, how to say company like a, a similar one like the uh, I think Razer has a many button mouse too. In any case, um I don't can I can't compare it uh, straight off. Um but um, I can give you a little um idea of what uh, what's like what it is like to use this uh, mouse for uh, you know a quite long time and uh, also what you can expect from it and what you want to basically watch out from so here you see it close up um, we can of course change the uh, mood here I've got my flashlight on just so that you can see in much detail every little speck of dirt and uh, uh, how to say yeah dust everything uh, right so the mouse feels pretty good in my hand it's uh, slightly it's almost on the smaller end if you go here you can see that my um, if I hold this like if I hold this like let me see if I hold this like straight like this my finger actually goes outside this button uh, so I hold it slightly rotated just a few like degrees and uh, just like that so that I have a good reach of this by the way this numpad can be moved uh, back and forth with a little this little screw here down below there you see it and then you can move it uh, right and then I have it slightly shifted so that my uh, finger just exactly meets there uh, so it's it's large it's large enough uh, for me but it could be larger however I do have uh, quite big hands uh, so if you have enormous hands you might want to look into um, another mouse and if you have pretty quite large hands uh, then it's um, you know it's probably fine I have pretty large hands so but there are always people with larger hands in any case um, we have a little weird uh, gripping surface here and it's uh, it feels weird to touch but when using it it's pretty nice because you don't notice it and you can make your um, ring finger ring finger and also your little finger uh, basically rests on it by friction so you don't really touch the mouse pad below um, also let this video be a quick little review of the um, of the mouse mat it's like M M300 it has a little protected uh, anti-frizzing edge here and it's very huge and it's pretty low friction on this one it's really uh, it's really nice to use actually and of course as I'm using a Corsair a mouse pad and a mouse they should be working very good together I have to assume that engineers thought of matching these little pads with the mouse mat you can see there is a, actually a little bit of friction here um, has been a little rasping on this one I don't know how because I've been using this mouse mat all along I suppose there is some dust or something on yeah I don't know it's just speculating 
in any case this sensor is supposed to be pretty good um, the mouse is heavy the mouse is heavy it's actually a little bit too heavy for my taste because when you're moving and you're trying to you're, you're lifting the mouse up to like move it to another area it's very easy to accidentally drop it because if you grab it too hard you will like uh, you will like press 1000 buttons because this mouse has like 1000 buttons um, so you have to lift it gently and then it's very easy to drop and the mouse is too heavy. It is too heavy. No joke. I mean, that's one of the downsides. Um, I heard from other reviews that the scroll wheel can uh, break easily. Um, it hasn't broken for me or anything like that, but the scroll wheel has a big issue. When I click, you know, when I click the scroll wheel, it's a lot of resistance. It's a little hard to click it. And if I would click this all day, I would probably be tired in my finger. It's not that I have to use force, but uh, from other mice I've been using, this is definitely more resistance than usual. Uh, left and right click buttons work fine. Uh, I don't know if this is a mouse, uh, this is a, Window. I think it's a Windows issue because my uh, last uh, Microsoft mouse mice just had the same issue and that is that double click speed is a little bit slow on vanilla settings so I turned it up a notch because I'm pretty used to double clicking so you know I don't want to double click when I click which was like the the Leb setting. In any case, um, the, the these keys feel. I mean, the clickiness of these keys. They feel really good. Uh, it's easy to click them. It's uh, just just about right. Just about right. Uh, like the ra uh, left and right mouse button is really nice to work with. Also, these side buttons here. They feel amazing to use. These are really nice. It's a really like nice feeling of them. Um, and I've set up different moods, but basically when I when I hold the mouse normally here, I can use this one to browse forward and the one below here, which I can actually use by just tilting the finger when clicking it. I don't need to change grip or anything, I can just click back and forth on internet pages easily. Uh, then I actually use a lot of weird buttons like this one is like enter for me It's very nice to not have to like write something and then like bring your hand all over to the keyboard and click Enter and then go back again and then go back again. It's so easy just clicking here um, To be honest uh, the first month is uh, not very fun to use this <clears throat> all these buttons here uh, and it takes a little time for uh, like one to actually set up this to a nice working condition where you want the keys exactly where you want them. And of course I have game specific setups too. But it's really nice to have many keys. It really suits me and I don't regret buying this mouse. Um, however, this one is a little bit hard to click. The mouse is almost too small for my... Um, <laughs> for my finger um, and uh, yeah one thing more this uh, thick braided cable it feels quality I don't know of course I only used it for a few months but uh, it's heavy man it's also not centered here you can see it's like not centered um, which kind of displaced the moment a little bit. I know there is like a gap here. You can't place it here anyways. But um, the fact is that, uh, you know, this uh, disappears under the <clears throat> uh, desk surface. And it kind of it sometimes gets stuck a little bit. Like this um, braided cable causes friction with the edge of the desktop and the cable is quite unflexible which kind of sometimes make it like eh, uh, and it's very annoying um yeah that's like one thing in any case it's pretty good overall um I think this LED light sometimes feel a little bit hot, so when I use my normal mood, it's pretty dim. Um, now I have my flashlight on, I can see if I can turn it off, so you get a more represented picture. This is more how it looks like, like this. And this is like full strength RGB. Uh, yeah.
And that's about the hardware. Let's have a little quick check on the uh, software IQ2. All right, and then we have a little part about Corsair, especially RGB products like the uh, like my mouse and keyboard. Uh, we have a little part of Corsair that's not very nice, and that is their software. IQ, which you will have to, to change the light moods and stuff like that in an um, easy way. Um, anyways, uh, its first flaw is that it might take forever to start the damn software and it might crash, so I just preloaded it for you. Um, it may look pretty polished and nice, but that's not true, it's pretty shit. Uh, it has support, I don't know, really, it should just be replaced but you can have a little dashboard of some information about temperatures and stuff like that I might you know it might be kind of cool uh, we can here change the uh, light moods we have instant lighting too so we can change the lighting instantly uh, if you'd like that and we also have settings for uh, your uh, for your products uh, anyways, it might look all nice and that, but if we go to like the keyboard here, um, we have, you know, we can set up its um, its lightning effects like this. I just put it a static color. Uh, we can of course change the moods with the click of the button of a mouse and we can have like different moods. Um, however, uh, it's a little bit annoying, but uh, here on profiles you can like uh, save profiles uh, but you can't really save profiles on to the um, uh, the mouse or keyboard easily I mean you can save it over but you can't save it with all features and if you I know I, I set up these uh, two nice different profiles here and they're of course for both my keyboard and for my uh, uh, yeah they're, they're for both my keyboard and mouse then and I can switch between them easily uh, but I can't export this profile to an onboard slot no because they don't have the same features uh, so I need to craft the onboard pro like on onboard slot uh, manually again and it takes a lot of time because I've set up these buttons here in different ways and it's really hard to set these things up you can't just click here because then you will reassign the command here you'll need to make you'll need to select a button and then make a command and then uh, no the other way around you need to make a command and then select a button make a command select another button so it's really um, it's really counterintuitive to use and the software sometimes also crashes and on top of that it takes ages for the program to start when the computer starts um, yeah but my you know the worst part of it is that it's no easy way to load profiles over completely to uh, the hardware units not for not for my K70 or my Shimitar, which is pretty modern stuff. Uh, I don't understand why they have so little uh, space for storing the settings. I mean, an SSD card of 64 gigabytes is like super tiny. You know, I'm sure they would be able to fit like one gigabyte into both of them. It can't be so expensive. Uh, so that they could do better. It should really be doable to just load the entire profile onto your unit so that you don't have to set up it, set up the same thing two times just in order to not use IQ. Um, like for example if I bring my mouse and keyboard to another system uh, I want to have different layouts that I'm uh, that I usually use on my mouse and keyboard so that I can go to action easily without uh, setting up macros and stuff because you know my Shimitar Pro has a lot of buttons and uh, 
with uh, these many buttons, you kind of want them to do what they're supposed to do. In any case, in any case, that is uh, the hugest downside so far I've uh, encountered with the Corsair products, and that's the IQ. So, I mean, could be worse. Yep, so that was the little uh, anecdotal review of the Shimitar um, Corsair mouse. And I hope this has been useful for you and that it will help you make up your mind if this is a mouth, uh, is a mouse, uh, that it's worth your money or if you want to opt for another mouse. Uh, there aren't very many mouses with, uh, mice with so many buttons around there. Uh, and, uh, well, I haven't tested them, but I think this mouse suits me pretty good and I'm happy with it except IQ hey. but um, yep a little heavy has some smaller issues but uh, generally it's a really good mouse and it's really accurate what I noticed at least with the mouse pad I have and uh, yeah that's that I hope this video helped you and if it did leave a like if you really want to help this video and channel out you can donate to us using Streamlabs or you can become a long time per te oh, God damn it, English or you can become a long term Patreon in any case thank you very much for watching this is your new favorite host on your new favorite channel Jim Edison signing out bye